At this point in the evening, this is my favorite, favorite uh, point um, of, of these annual events. We get to present the Internet Archive Hero Award. The Internet Archive Hero Award. Very cool. Um, the purpose of the award is to recognize somebody or an organization that has taken a risk and really put themselves out for the public good, that has really led with openness. So over the years, we've had these awards that we've um, basically been, uh, I don't know, I, I, I see as heroes in our world. And we, I think we're surrounded with heroes that are kind of fabricated celebrities or sports stars or, I don't know, people that are just merely rich. Um, and I think that we really need a different form of hero, and we have heroes in our field. This year, I'm pleased to announce uh, the, this year's Internet Archive 2022 Internet Hero Award goes to the uh, one of the people that have done an amazing amount of work in government uh, documents and, and the like, but has really propelled the internet forward, Carl Malamud. Um, here, here to introduce Carl um, is uh, Corinne McSherry, uh, the legal director from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. All right. So um, it really does seem fitting tonight, um, given the sort of theme that we've been talking about this evening about access to government data to be introducing Carl Malamud and um, publicresource.org. And I actually feel a little silly in this crowd to be introducing this person. I mean, come on. You know Carl. You know the work they've been doing, the work that they have been doing for decades. Um, you know, I really think of Carl as kind of, you know, OG of access to government data. Um, but I will say a few nice words, deserved words, about one of my very favorite clients. So um, EFF defends digital rights. Um, and a big part of that work is defending online expression in the courts, um, in Congress, and, and around the world. And for well over a decade, a big part of that work, and a big part of my work personally, has been defending Carl Malamud <laughs> and, uh, and Public Resource. That's because Public Resource has a, has a really deceptively simple and visionary project. And really, you know, again, a lot of people have that project, but they, early on, you know, Carl had this vision. Why don't we make public information truly public? SEC filings, congressional hearings, laws. Why don't we make them available online for free to everyone with an internet connection? And why would we do that? Well, because as you all know, in a democracy, the people own the work their government produces. And it's a lot easier to speak truth to power if you know what power's up to. And in a nation governed by the rule of law, and I believe we are still that nation, everyone has the right to know the law. Everyone has the right to share the law and comment on the law, whether it's the Americans with Disabilities Act or a Supreme Court opinion or the fire safety code that you hope your home builder followed. But until relatively recently, recently at least in my memory, accessing all of that kind of information, it, it was actually pretty hard to do. Unless you had access to a really good library or money to spend on lawyers and copying fees, and maybe even in some cases the ability to travel all the way to our nation's capital to sit in a little room and read the rules. 
Carl Malamud figured out very early on that the internet could change that as long as someone had the will to make it happen. And he also decided early on that he was gonna be one of those people. And so he did. And so he has. But it hasn't been easy for him. For one thing, bureaucracies like the Securities and Exchange Commission or the Patent and Trademark Office, they hate change, especially if it might cost money that they have to justify. But the thing about Carl, and let me tell you, this is true about Carl, he is persistent. <laughs> and he is persuasive. And he can bring people together to get things done. And that is what he has done over and over and over again. And so thanks to Carl, reporters, inventors, students, researchers, ordinary people, they can ask to access corporate financial disclosures in real time. They can look at patents, pending or not, including stupid patents, which if you want to read more about stupid patents, go to EFF.org and we will tell you about them. <laughs> and lots and lots of other information. And other organizations also help with this work, but really, Carl is OG, or one of the OGs in, the, in this work. But resistance to change hasn't been the only barrier that Carl has had to overcome. The thing is, there's powerful organizations, including governments, that think they own the law. And they want to own it, and they want to lock it down so they can sell it back to you piecemeal, in perpetuity. It also turns out those people have a lot of money, and they have an army of lawyers. But the thing is, Carl does too. So I'm one of them, and I, I'm proud of that, for sure. But I want to say I am not alone. The thing is, Carl has marshaled pro bono lawyers around the country to work with him. And he has led the fight all the way up to the Supreme Court, the United States, and he has won. But the other thing about Carl is he doesn't give up, so he is not resting on his laurels. He's staying in the fight. He's still working every day to free the law in the United States and around the world. So I'll just close by saying that, you know, at EFF, we know that the internet kind of feels like a mixed bag right now for, for a lot of people. But Carl, like Brewster, has always seen what the internet could be. And Carl has dedicated his life to building that internet. So it is my very great privilege to introduce a real, true internet hero, my friend, my client, my fellow traveler, Carl Malibu. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Corinne. Thank you, Brewster. That was totally over the top, and I have to say how much I really appreciate that. Uh, the, the three of us have spent so many years walking together up that crooked path. We are fellow travelers, and I appreciate your company and your counsel, and especially your friendship. Good evening, my friends. Thank you for coming tonight. Our verse for tonight is Democracy's Library. You've heard Brother Brewster preach his sermon earlier this evening. Let me just say amen to every single thing he said. He spoke truth. Can we have an amen? amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Government information is more than just a good idea. It is about the law. It is about our rule book. It is the manual on how we we as citizens, how we choose to run our society. We own this manual. Government information is the operating system of our society. It is the code by which we, 
We the people by which we the people who own our democracies, it is how we govern ourselves. These codes are law. These are edicts of government. We are the trustees of our democracies. We are the board of directors. Every government official works for every one of us. And what we must do our part to work for them. No one is coming. It is up to us. But we cannot be the trustees of our society today. We cannot honor our obligations to future generations if we cannot freely read and speak and even change that rule book. Democracy's library is our foundational text. You have edit privileges. You have root. Use your super user powers, but remember, with great power comes great responsibility. John Adams said that a democracy cannot work without an informed citizenry. He was talking to you. He said we must let every sluice of knowledge be set aflowing if we are to succeed as a fair and just and democratic society, a society that lifts us all up because we are informed citizens, because we can access and read and speak from democracy's library. It is a fundamental premise of the rule of law that we know our rights and obligations. This is the principle of promulgation, a doctrine at the very heart of the rule of law. My work is focused on America and India, the world's two largest democracies. But the principle of promulgation is universal, for without this, we cannot have notice of our rights and our obligations. This is a global ideal. It is particularly apt that we are talking tonight about Democracy's Library at the Internet Archive. The Internet's public library, our town hall, our commons. I've had the privilege and the honor to work with the Internet Archive since 1996. It is a sophisticated and powerful technical machine built by an amazing and dedicated staff. For people like me who have been able to upload literally millions of government documents to this open repository, it has been my cloud. The Internet Archive was where I was able to stash 14,000 hours of video of congressional hearings, it is where we put 20 years of IRS nonprofit returns, 6,000 videos copied from the National Archives, 19.8 million pages of PACER documents, 25,000 legally mandated public safety standards, the edicts of governments of all 50 states, and 750,000 official gazettes from all the states of India. Yeah. I must thank, we, we really must all thank everybody at the Internet Archive for the wonderful thing they have built and for the oh so competent and proficient and knowledgeable and also I must say nice people who work at this essential facility. Yeah. Tonight is special for me. I, I've always considered myself a civil servant who, who serves our government, who serves the people, despite not having an actual job. And it is so gratifying to have that recognized by you tonight. Um, so, uh, while I accept this award with much gratitude, I have to turn it around. This is a communal effort. We are the government. We are the people. What can we do if we all work together? How can we pay this gift forward? So I thank you for your praise, but also for the work all of you do. Every day, we are all of us. We are the people that help build and, and run and improve the public side of our global internet. Let us all take great pride in that tremendous accomplishment. Gandhi taught us that we must all be public workers, that we must all contribute to our global village every single day if we wish to make it a better place, to own our world, to fulfill our duties to each other as trustees. For Gandhiji, he spun cloth and he blogged. He wrote prolifically every day. For us, scanning is the new spinning. Let us be the change we wish to see. We are the servants of knowledge. In India, we say victory to knowledge. Jai Gyan, universal access to all human knowledge is the great promise of our time. Let us resolve tonight to keep that promise. 
But this is also why we must try harder. We must not allow our commons to be enclosed by venal profiteers. We cannot let our internet be nailed up upon a cross of gold. We must work harder. We must seize this opportunity in front of us before we lose our moment in time. This is our moment. We must build a distributed and interoperable internet for our global village. We must make the increase and diffusion of knowledge our mutual and everlasting mission. And we must seize the means of computation and share their fruits with all the people. Let us all swim together in the ocean of knowledge. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, and thank you so much. This has been a real thrill. You've touched me deeply. Thank you. Jai